Hello, my name is Curtis Steele, and I am the application developer for the ProWall Commander Control System. In this video, we'll go through running the mixer, which includes navigating the mix select screen, mixer control, digital readouts, totals, job log, and just general function of the keypad and display encoder. If you have any questions after viewing the video, please call ProWall support at 403-335 9500. So we're going to go through how to set up the uh, correct uh, mix for a particular job. We're going to also go through how to uh, set the mixer up to start the pour and also go through some of the screens that may be useful for the operator as far as seeing what totals uh, that particular job has uh, generated and also how to go back and look at previous jobs, maybe to reprint a ticket or even to, um, to uh, look at how many jobs have been accumulated on the mixer from, from essentially day one. So to get started, we're looking at the, the main menu in this case, uh, or the main home screen, I should say. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to menu and we're going to select the mix. So right now it's on mix 2. If I wanted to select a different mix, I just simply touch the mix number, rotate the knob, push the knob to select the mix, and now we're on the new mix. So we can just leave it on this one for now. You'll also notice on the mix select screen you can actually set a volume stop. So if I wanted this, this particular mix to stop at say uh, uh, two and a half cubic meters. I just put in two and a half cubic meters, turn the volume stop on, and every two and a half cubic meters the belt is going to stop and the operator can reset the, the process again doing another two and a half cubic meters every time he hits the, the start button. Uh, this, is, this is actually quite useful if you want to do wheelbarrows as well, so if you only want to do say a quarter cubic meter uh, the belt will stop every quarter cubic meter and you can just kind of keep repeating that and it'll just keep accumulating the total every quarter cubic meter. So that's the volume stop. You can also enter in a job name if you want, so any, just call it whatever specific job you want, we'll just call it job A and that will actually print out on the ticket showing you um, the job name. The other thing on the mix select screen that's very important is these uh, moisture percentages. So if you know the moisture of your sand, for example, on gate B, you can actually hit that value, rotate the knob, and you'll notice that it's reducing the, the amount of water that comes from the uh, water pump on the mixer, and it's calculating how much water's actually in the sand. So it's, it's essentially just subtracting one from the other but it's ensuring that you're not adding more water than, that is actually, than is actually required because you've got, in this case, or this example, 25 liters of water coming from the sand. So once those values are set up, you've added the moisture in for the sand. Uh, you can actually add moisture in for the stone as well, or gate A if, if, if so desired, and a volume stop if you need it. Now you're essentially ready to, uh, to go pour concrete. So we're gonna go back to the main screen so you'll notice on this screen that uh, there's these red bars. The red bars are your, your set points or your targets for those particular, uh, in this case, liquids. So, for example, our water is set at around, looks like 50 liters per minute approximately. Um, the admix here is about 0.3, admix 1, admix 2 is around 0.6 liters per minute. You can change these... Um, gauges as well. You'll notice there's buttons here for 1 and 3. So if your particular mix design actually had an Admix 1 and an Admix 3, then you can switch between the two. So in this particular case, or this simulation example, we have both. So you can flip back and forth between them. Same thing goes for 4 and 2. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start this mix and uh, We'll go through some of the, the totals functions that you can you can view on the screen. So to start your, your mix you have to turn your water pump on 
and you have to hit set your RPM high. What you'll notice is when you go to start your belt, if you don't have RPM high on, it'll show up on the screen and say IP, RPM high on for mixing. So it's flashing, telling you that you can't start this mix unless you have your high idle on. It'll also do the same for, for water. So let's say we turned the high idle on, but we forgot to turn the water pump on. We start our mix. And what'll happen is it'll say this one in this case will come up with an actual indication on the screen saying is your water pump on. So that tells you right away that you need to set your water pump on. Now you're on. You can actually see, I don't know if you see these values here, these percentage values, that's your actual water pump speed on the screen. So as soon as you see that, you know that your water pump is on. So I just turned it off, it went to zero, turned it on, water pump went up to 19%. So now essentially we're ready to, to uh, start mixing concrete. So we turn our mix auger on, in this case. It flashes amber here, telling us that it's uh, going in forward. And then we hit this button here to start the mix. The only other thing that you'll notice for, for your particular mix is if you don't have these admix uh, functions activated, right now they're red, which means that they're, they're off, it will actually come up with a fault here. So it'll say Admix pump not on. So let's put Admix 4. Now it's saying Admix 3 pump flashing green to arm. So it's in indicating to you that you need to turn the Admix functions on for this particular mix design. So I believe this one had all four activated. So I have to activate all four so that it doesn't give me an error. Now when I go and run, there's no messages come up on the screen telling me that I forgot something or didn't do something. And you'll see that the total starts to increase. So we're actually pouring concrete at this point. The total screen, which is this one at the top uh, left of the main home screen, kind of gives you a window of all the different uh, totals that are going into that particular mix. So you're going to see your total water, total cement powder, your water cement ratio, uh, stone, sand, everything that's going into the mix, including your, your volume. So if I stop this now, I'll stop there. I can do a printout from here. I can also do a printout from this button. So if I hit that button, it'll start printing the, the various lines of the printout. So it doesn't matter whether you use this one or this, or this one, it's the same thing. You can also um, reset the totals uh, a couple different ways. One that stops, there it stops printing. So you can either reset the totals by hitting this button here. So if I hit that button, it'll bring up the reset. If I did it by mistake, I can hit no. Or let's say I'm on the total screen, I can actually hit that button, it's the same thing. So if I hit yes, all the totals reset to zero. Another uh, screen that's handy when you're uh, mixing is the digital readout screen. And when you're mixing concrete, this just gives you a, a, a view of the different uh, speed values and things like that that you might uh, see depending on the options that are activated. So in this case, color isn't activated, so you're not seeing a speed value for color, but um, it just gives you kind of a, a window of, of some of the process values that are, are or actually running, so liters per minute, RPM, and things like that. We go over this uh, display in more detail in the troubleshooting and diagnostics video. Another important uh, screen to use when you're uh, using the mixer is the mixer control screen. So you'll see on this screen there's a few things that, uh, that you can do. One of them is uh, you can actually unload, I'm just going to turn that, you can actually unload cement by itself. So if you hit cement unload, that puts it in the cement unload mode. And then if you hit button 14, you'd actually be just running the cement screw only and unloading powder. That uh, same unload mode goes for any of the functions. So if you just wanted to unload color by itself, you just hit color unload. If you wanted to 
unload auxiliary one, which is typically fly ash, same process. Just hit that, 14, and then you can unload the fly ash out of the bin. The uh, low level override is used if you have uh, like a cement low level option. Uh, not every mixer has it, so it's, it's there for, for those optional functions. Uh, one other thing to note here actually too is this unload percentage in the top right hand corner. That percentage is relates to these functions here. So if you wanted to unload your cement typically at a 60% speed, you would just adjust that to 60, but you can adjust it to whatever value you want. That unload percentage is used for all of these. So in this case, if you were unloading color, it would also run at 60% speed. Uh, the values down here are for for kind of specific functions. So dry mix is if you're you're running off a mix without water, you would hit dry mix mode, and then you wouldn't have to have the water pump on. Uh, vibrate select is important. You if you want to select your vibrators to be in an automatic mode, you hit vibrate select, and then hit the vibrator that you want to have automatic. So let's say you just wanted to have the cement vibrator in automatic mode. You would hit three, turn that off. Now every time you go to mix concrete, the cement vibrator, vibrator will come on automatically. And to turn it off, if you don't want it on automatically, you just hit vibrate select again, turn it off. And now it's back to more of a manual operation. Water manual is used uh, if, if, let's say for example, you have a mix with a really, really low water content and you just wanted to uh, kind of adjust it manually as you go, you can hit water manual and uh, there's a um, metering or a ball valve on the outlet of the water line that you can use to, to meter the water. So that's essentially disabling the automatic water mode and allowing you to do it uh, manually. Just uh, all these pictures on the back of the screen that show the uh, keypad and the, uh, the main control encoder or display encoder are there for redundancy. So for example, if your keypad went down for some reason and you wanted to be able to set your, your vibrator functions or say switch and add mix off, you can actually touch the keypad and it, uh, it activates exactly the same way as the actual keypad. So you see it went red here. So it's used, used as a redundancy. And the same thing goes for the, uh, the speeds, for, for example, for your belt. If you wanted to change your belt speed here, you can adjust it here as well. Or you can adjust it using the actual uh, encoder on the, on the display panel. Now, if you wanted to go back and uh, see a previous job or look to see what, uh, what, you, what you did on the previous job, you would go to Menu, Job Log. And this is where you can see the previous 25 jobs that were, were done with the mixer. So to navigate through these, you just simply push the arrows left or right. So right now we're on one and scroll through. So this was job A, the one that we did here just a few minutes ago. You can see that it gives you a job number, all the totals on the screen, and you can actually reprint this ticket even after it's been reset. The other thing you can look at too is the, the log data. So this is the amount of data that's stored on the display for all the mixes or all the jobs that have been done since the mixer started pouring concrete. So as this grows, a green bar will kind of come out here showing you how many you've done. So in this case, we've only done three jobs, so it's showing you three jobs. But this could hold up, you know, tens of thousands of jobs depending on the memory size and the amount of data that it's storing. Uh, and that particular log can be uh, copied to a USB stick and uh, opened up in Excel, for example, on your computer. This button here allows you to reset the job number. So for example, it's going to start at one with a new mixer and go up to a maximum of 65,000. But let's say you're on a job site and you wanted to do start at zero for that particular job site, you would just hit that. Now the job will start at one again and go up. So 
let's say every 10 jobs you wanted to reset it, you can just go back, reset that number, and we'll start at one again. Thanks for watching this video, and please contact Parole Support if you have any further questions.